Okay. All right, everybody, welcome back. Okay, let me admit more of you. Okay. Okay. All right. So you see, everybody, uh, now we are going to talk about neuromuscular blocker. That is non-depolarizing agent means this is the drug which is not going to uh, deal with the action potential. Okay. Rather, it would have some other way. Right. Um, when I say the uh, when I say that this is a class of the drug which is going to deal with muscle relaxation, okay, it means definitely the nicotinic receptors would be there, right? Definitely the um, uh, uh, the influx of sodium would be controlled, all right. But the thing is, this how exactly this is happening, right? If we reinforce what we just talked a little of uh, like some time before. So we talked about that depolarizing agents were there, right? And then they were do doing work in two phases. First phase was they were uh, uh, like doing some over influx of sodium by hyperactivating, right? Due to the agonist uh, binding. And the second phase was desensitization, right? So the first one was depolarization. Uh, I would say excessive of the depolarization and then it was desensitization because of the excessive um, uh, depolarization, right? So this class of drug is not going to follow the same pattern, rather it's going to follow a bit different pattern. Uh, all right, so the thing is here, they say non-depolarizing agent. And over here, I have placed a picture. I have placed the picture of the arrows, right? So what happened was, you see, earlier in the early ages, all right, in South and Central America, so there was a plant by which um, the ancient people, they used to uh, like extract this drug, right? That is terrain to rain, all right? And then they used to coat the arrow with it, right? And as soon as the arrow would hit the animal, so at that moment, like the, what is the action? Muscle relaxing, right? If we do excessive muscle relaxation, so it will lead to paralysis, right? So definitely over here, we are talking about an arrow which has some serious muscle relaxant coated on it, okay? And as soon as it hits the person or the animal, right? So uh, definitely paralysis would be there. Extreme muscle relaxation would be there. So it was used in hunting. It was used in warfare, right? As a warfare. So what is the mechanism? Let's talk about it. All right. You see, non-depolarizing agents competitively inhibit, competitively, right? The effect of acetylcholine at the post-junctional membrane, nicotinic receptor of the neuromuscular junction, there is some pre-junctional inhibition of acetylcholine release. These agents prevent depolarization of the muscle and propagation of the action potential. Okay. Earlier, we talked about excessive work of acetylcholine. It passed on so much sodium inside that eventually the receptors got desensitized. Now we are talking about competitive inhibition, right? How they are competing, inhibiting? Like you see over here, wait. You see over here, yeah. This is NDMRD, that means non depolarizing uh, muscular junction, okay? So you see, they bind over here, and as a result, they bind over here, and as a result, the sodium cannot be influxed. When sodium is not getting inside, so 
obviously action potential won't be there right when action potential won't be there calcium influx won't be calcium release won't be there and when it's not there so muscle won't relax they would uh, sorry muscle won't contract right they would relax so these agents prevent depolarization of the muscle and propagation of the action potential right okay so when we talk about pharmacological properties so you see non depolarizing agents are administered parenterally and are generally used for long term motor paralysis paralysis and muscle relaxation occur within 1 to 5 minutes definitely when this was used in a war war situation right or it it was used in hunting so they would use something that would produce instant effect right so instantly the person goes into a paralysis when this uh, medication is administered parenterally non depolarizing agents have duration of actions that range from 20 to 90 minutes most non depolarizing agents are metabolized by the liver or are excreted unchanged the duration of action may be prolonged by hepatic or renal disease why hepatic and renal disease because obviously metabolism and elimination won't be there effectively right okay then is you see intermediate acting steroid muscle relaxing agents acha when i said that this class of drug actually has the main uh, hero which is curarin so definitely in all of these drugs which are we going to study in this particular class of drugs so they would have this c u r o n and maybe i u m also right so curonium would would be there to, in order to indicate the main chemical right so over here you see intermediate acting steroid muscle relaxing agents which is rocuronium and vecuronium are more commonly used than long acting agents when i talk about specific drugs so you see the first one is tubocurerin uh by the way uh, just for fun you know when i was a student so obviously a lot of drugs name was was there and a lot of um, you know we have to memorize a lot so uh, at times what i used to do was i used to change my password and uh, of the email address so that i would remember the names of the drugs and sometimes if um, the name of the drug would match with my friend's name or maybe the characteristics um, of that drug would match to my friend's name so i would always change the name of my friend to you know <laughs> the drug okay so Tubocurerin is actually the prototype and is seldom used clinically at this time. All right. So next up we have metucurin, which is a derivative of tubocurerin. It has the same properties but with less histamine release. Histamine is released in uh, when allergic reactions are there. Okay, and thus less hypotension and bronco constriction is there metucurin has a longer duration of action which is 40 minutes then is atracurium and cis um cisatracurium all right so atracurium causes some histamine release there i have inserted a table okay for your ease so don't worry ki kisi mein like we are saying some histamine is released and in the other one we are saying less histamine so you would uh, like i have uh, dashed a table for your ease to remember okay all right so then it uh, causes some histamine release it is inactivated spontaneously in plasma by non enzymatic hydrolysis that is delayed by acidosis right then it, its duration of action is reduced by hyperventilation induced respiratory alkalosis wait and then lodocy 
Lodanathine, a breakdown product of atracurium, may accumulate to cause scissors. All right. All right. So then is cystracurium is a stero isomer. I'm sure in organic chemistry you have studied that, so I'm not going into depth. Of atracurium that releases less histamine and forms less lodacine. Uh, it has replaced atracurium use in clinical practice. All right, then is our next hero. Okay, that is uh, Mibacurium is a short acting, which is rapidly hydrolyzed by plasma polynesterase, has a slow onset of action relative to sesenalcholine and produces moderate histamine release at higher dose. Um, all right, so you see these drugs, Vicurium, um, Rocuronium, I have a tongue twister right now. <laughs> okay, then is Sancuronium, uh, let me correct this, Vicuronium. All right, so these are all steroid derivatives with little histaminic or ganglionic blocking activity. Ganglionic block, blocking activity we would uh, study in our next session. So, these two drugs have intermediate du duration of actions and they are metabolized by liver. Okay. And this medicine here, that is pencuronium, has a longer action and it is used less frequently than others. It is excreted by the kidney with minimal hepatic metabolism. Okay. All right. So, these are everything which I have talked to you. All right. All of these are already summarized here, okay? And uh, literally, you would be asked about this, you know, um, uh, uh, that what is formed when the drug is broken down and all that, okay? And how much of the histamine is, histamine is released? So you would be questioned about it. So please, um, again, print out this table, stick it somewhere on your wall, and memorize it on a daily basis. Okay, therapeutic uses. Non-depolarizing agents are used during surgery as a junk to general anesthetics. You see, previously, we when we talk about general anesthesia, so we said use an adjunct with the general anesthesia, but for shorter operations, right? For shorter duration of surgeries, right? So over here, you're using this general anesthesia to induce muscle paralysis and muscle relaxation. The order of muscle Paralysis is small, rapidly contracting muscle before slower contracting muscle growth, followed by intercostal muscles and then diaphragm. Recovery of muscle function is reverse order and respiration often must be assisted. Although therapeutic use is, you see, whenever there is uh, electroconvulsive therapy given to anybody, so we do give this drug so that the contraction won't be there, okay, that much. So these agents are also used for muscle paralysis in patients when it is critical to control ventilation. Uh, for example, ventilation failure from pneumonia or endotracheal intubation. What is endotracheal intubation? That is like you put a tube inside the trachea, which is usually for, uh, uh, you know, ventilator, whenever a person goes on ventilator, so they do that. Okay, and to, um, and to control muscle contraction during the therapy. Okay, then it's reversal of non-depolarizing drug blockage. So definitely it would be neostigmine, okay? So neostigmine is the drug which actually is a acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, okay, and is administered um, to reverse residual post or surgical muscarinic receptor blocker uh, blockage and avoid inadvertent hypoxia or apnea. All right, adverse effects of contradiction. So cardiovascular system, tubercurinium, atracurium, mevacurinium, and all of these may produce cardiovascular effects such as hypotension or increased heart rate due to histamine release, right? Uh, ganglionic blocking activity or vagolytic activity. Vagolytic is related to the vagus nerve, right? 
Okay, then is adverse effect and contradiction. When we talk about here, we talk about respiratory system. So some non-depolarizing agents can produce bronchospasm in sensitive individuals due to histamine release, right? So agents that release histamines are contraindicated for asthmatic patients and patients with a history of anaphylactic reactions, right? Okay, then is drug interaction, general inhalation anesthetic, particularly isoflurane, increase the neuromuscular blocking action of the non-depolarizing agents. The dose of the neuromuscular junction blocking drug may have to be reduced. Another one is like antibiotic, among with other, uh, this you have to remember. So I don't have like, maybe I could give you some mnemonic, all right, for it. But uh, seriously, you just have to remember. So I can't give you some, uh, because you have not studied antibiotics right now. So I cannot tell, go, dig in deep into the things, okay? All right, so this is like amino glycoside antibiotics, among with others inhibit pre-junctional acetylcholine release and potentiate the effect of non-depolarizing and depolarizing neuromuscular junction blocking drug. Okay? All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, inshallah, in our next lesson, uh, cholinergic pharmacology would be over. Let me stop.